Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, shout out to my homie, Tori Rain. He did a great video, and he was talking about the Rooney Rule and talking about some other things as far as the NFL go. Now, on, on one hand, we had an epic battle between two black quarterbacks, Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. Great battle. Epic game. Fantastic game. You, you can't even deny that. You know, can't even deny that. Uh, you know, you just got to get the credit where the credit is due. Where you had that epic game between two black quarterbacks, the NFL still shows that it don't trust black people and black men or black women. Because I want to say women, if you are a female billionaire and you want to buy a team, you should be able to... They do not trust us in certain positions. They don't mind us playing. They just don't want us to own. Now, I want to talk about the Rooney Rule. The Rooney Rule was started by, implemented by Dan Rooney uh, Sr. I think he was the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I think his sons took over the team and he implemented the, the Rooney rule where basically that a team had to, and I want y'all to hear this closely, interview but not hire a minority candidate for either a high-end executive position or a coaching position. Now, this was implemented in 2003. Guess how many head coaches... Guess how many head coaches they had at the time this was implemented? Three, or should I say tree? Now, let's go to 2020. Guess how many black head coaches they got in the league, the NFL? Tree, or should I say three? 17 years later, and shit has not changed. But the league is 70% black. There is still this thing with these owners, these white owners, that still don't believe that black men can lead other black men or a team that has predominantly black men on it. It's always been this thing where black men's leaderships have been questioned throughout history. For real. It's always been that thing. It's okay. So here's the thing. So black men can be be players, but they don't want us to be head coaches. Our owners or high-end executive positions. Now I just want to do a little side note. The Raiders were accused of violating and circumventing the Rooney rule because a deal was worked out with John Gruden before Mark Davis interviewed any black candidates. Some people said he didn't interview a black candidate at all. But we already know the NFL isn't going to run an investigation because all the NFL do is lie and they've been caught in lies. And see, I want to call out fake Stephen A. Smith. See, he want to call the NFL out when it convenient for him when it benefits him now he wants to accuse the NFL and the owners of racism when it comes to not hiring a black head coach because I'm not going to say minority and I'm not going to say no person of color fuck that shit fuck everybody else it's all about the brothers I'm a black man I ain't worried about nobody else nobody don't be worried about us but here's the thing he wants to call him out on racism when it comes to not hiring black head coaches. But this is the same Stephen A. Smith that wants to pretend Colin Kaepernick's situation don't have nothing to do with racism. See, he only talk when it's convenient for him. But now, it was funny. I saw his little outburst, and it was funny. It was funny as hell. But at the end of the day, you can't take Stephen A. Smith seriously because once again, just like a lot of uh, dudes on YouTube, they exercise inconsistent blackness. They they want to be power to the people 
when it's convenient for them. So, the hell with Stephen A. Smith. 17 years later, it's pretty much the same. Three black coaches when it's when it was implemented, and three black coaches 17 years later, and no black ownership. Now keep in mind when when Sean Puffy Combs remotely hinted that he was interested in buying the Carolina Panthers, he was not only attacked by white people, he was attacked by black people. And you know what happened with Henry Wolford and and God bless his soul Nipsey Hussle when him, Henry Wolford out of the Bay Area put on one of the biggest minstrel shows on TV just disrespecting uh, Sean Puffy Combs to the fullest he got called out by the black community people called uh, called the news station calling him out he was a he was forced to apologize and then he got into it with Nipsey Hussle and he was called out by Nipsey Hussle and props to Nipsey Hussle for calling him out on his blatant coonery never saw I was just so disappointed in that minstrel show that was orchestrated by Henry Wolfer just just highly disappointed and a lot of black people was disappointed but that's been the thing but see, now all of a sudden, they want to try to bring in Jay-Z to cover up their, their tracks. And like I said, keep in mind, when this whole Colin Kaepernick thing was like was like jumping off, I did a video a couple of years ago where I came with some stats, some numbers, where I said out of the 32 NFL teams, all of them are pretty much white except for I think the guy that owns the Jacksonville Jaguars he is uh, Arab I think but he not black so it doesn't matter and I know that you had some black people that was trying to tie him into being not nah, that, nah, that motherfucker ain't black they may some of them may have black DNA in them but they not black Okay, and they don't consider themselves black, and a lot of them get mad if you even remotely call them black. They do not want to be called black a lot of times. So, with that being said, the NFL owners age range from 65 to 90, 90 plus. Martha Stewart. Excuse me, not Martha Stewart. Martha Ford. Martha Ford, who owns the Detroit Lions. They, their family can't wait till she kicks over because they just want to sell the damn team. But she in her 90s and she just keep living. There's not one NFL owner, I think, except for Dan Snyder, who I think may be in his late 50s early 60s he may be the youngest NFL owner but most of those dudes are in their 60s Jerry Jones is like in his 70s but that's what I'm talking about so it's still a good old boy league and like I said they have to just interview a black Kennedy don't have to hire him so basically it's a token interview you go into the interview with no intentions on even getting the job. Some of these people already have their uh, coach in place. And you know what's the sad part about it? Some of these new head coaches that then got hired are college coaches with losing records. Some of them is wide receiver coaches who are white, who haven't even been an offensive or defensive coordinator. But you can't get none of these owners to hire blacks because it's always been this thing when they see blacks succeeding and blacks getting along and blacks showing that they can lead other blacks people panic and Mike Tomlin 
Well, guess who, who he's employed by? The Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, one thing I can say about the Pittsburgh Steelers, this is why they always had a lot of fans that wasn't from Pittsburgh. Because of the Roonies. I don't know the Roonies, and I'm not going to go out of my way to praise them. But here's the thing with Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin is not going to probably be fired. Why should he? Has a winning record. Bill Cowher was there for like, what, 15 years? Before he won a Super Bowl? Mike Tomlin won a Super Bowl in his second season as the coach and went to an, and went to another one. He doesn't have a losing record. He's won 65% of his games. So he shouldn't go nowhere. He's won playoff games. Unlikely. Well, I ain't even gonna go into him. I, I ain't even gonna go into him. But like I said, you guys, this is very disturbing. See, this is the conversation that make you know, you know, Caucasian people start loosening up their tides and stuff when you bring this this up. And they start playing dumb, like, hey man, what's up? What, what why ain't there no brothers coaching teams? Like I said, oh, you believe we can play, but you just don't feel that we can lead our own teams, right? Because they feel ownership and coaching leads to power. That's crazy. A league that's 70% black and only three head coaches out of <laughs> 32 fucking teams. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta like come to y'all own conclusions. Something is wrong with this picture. See, this is the thing that the clear people don't never want to talk about. They never want to talk about these things, and they love. And you get these morons that come on here. Hey, everything is good. We're we're all one group. No, no. It's the same thing with the black quarterback. Because the black quarterback is supposed to be the leader. I mean, excuse me, the black quarterback is or the quarterback is considered the leader of the team. And once again, people don't believe that black can lead. They believe we can follow because they still have the slave master mentality. A lot of these owners and a lot of these GMs when it comes to putting black men in coaching positions. And the NBA still got a problem. With the NBA still got a problem. They got that same problem too. The league, the NBA is shit damn near 80% black. And there's not and they have 32 teams and maybe and still have a low percentage of black coaches. And this is one of the problems that I have with LeBron because LeBron has had black coaches and he appears to have undermined them. So this black coach thing is across the board. Same thing in baseball. How many black managers they got in baseball? Now, it's different. Baseball isn't primarily black like the NFL and the NBA. Those two sports are visibly black. So Major League Baseball, okay, you get a pass. Okay, you kind of get a pass. Okay? Because I don't know what is the percentage of black players in baseball. It ain't what it was like in the 70s and the 80s, I think in the 80s, that I think they had probably the highest amount of black players in the 80s and maybe the early 90s. But now, like I said, you look at baseball, baseball just, even when I was in school, baseball was just never considered the cool sport to play. If you played baseball in high school, you wasn't considered that dude. You wasn't, you wasn't necessarily popular. 
it didn't necessarily make you cool. You catch my drift? But if you play football or basketball, yeah, you was considered cool. But the funny thing is, if you look at the type of money that they making playing baseball, you getting a nine-year, $300 million contract shit. Y'all niggas better go, go back to signing up, up y'all kids for Little League shit. We need to bring that back to the hood because I played Little League baseball. I was pretty damn good at baseball except... I couldn't hit a slider. That was my only problem. Couldn't hit a slider. Couldn't hit a sinker. Saved my life. But besides that, I was pretty damn good at baseball. But once again, this is a big problem that we have in the NFL. And it's the elephant in the room. Or should I say, it's the silent elephant in the room. Or should I say, it's the white elephant in the room they don't want to they don't want to acknowledge these problems and see when you ask Roger Goodell these problems he started playing stupid like hmm? what are you talking about you know what we talking about man why ain't they no no hardly no black coaches in the NFL why are there no minority majority black owners in the NFL. Why is that? Because see, they don't want no black man owning the team saying he owned the team. But like I said, they might have had some deal in place with Jay-Z, but Jay-Z completely sold out the basically, you know, they he let the NFL use him as a uh, as a prop. And that's why people don't respect him. Because he let the NFL use him as a pawn to cover up their racist tracks when it came to Colin Kaepernick. And then they had that bogus ass bullshit workout. Or should I say tryout that anybody with common sense knew was a, a, a damn scam. Real talk. So in closing, I just want to say the Rooney rule is a complete joke it's not being acknowledged nobody don't even care because I feel like this why should I even go to an interview or why should you even call me for an interview and you already know you ain't finna hire me it's a waste of your time and it's a waste of my time but you only have me there because I'm black and you don't want to be accused of racism when you're clearly exercising racism by basically giving me an interview because I'm black, but you're not going to hire my black ass. Do that make any kind of sense? That's what I thought. Fill the comment section up. This is your boy, Town Biz. I'm out.